site called Nebi Samuel. It means the prophet Samuel in Arabic. And it is a site that since maybe Byzantine times has been associated with the uh, tomb of the prophet Samuel. Uh, very likely not his tomb, but this is the, the tradition that developed here. What we have over here is a mosque uh, that was built after the Crusades on the ruins of a Crusader church, which was built on the foundations of a Byzantine church. So this site has been venerated as Samuel's tomb for a number of centuries, and uh, it's also been transferred from uh, Muslim to Christian, and back to Muslim, and then to Jewish hands. Uh, over there is the entryway to the synagogue that is associated with it, but right here we have the main entryway into the mosque itself. That sign uh, says here the, the, um, the holy tomb of the prophet Samuel, Shmuel Hanavi, in uh, Hebrew there, and it says the same thing, Kabar uh, Hanavi Samuel in Arabic. You can see here the monumental entryway. Now inside here we've got it's essentially an old mosque rebuilt after World War I when it was partially damaged, built on the foundations of a, of a Christian church and then added to uh, as a synagogue. Now in the mosque here uh, as we saw, it's been partly taken over by uh, synagogue, so you've got kind of competing uh, competition for sacred space. This is the stairway that leads up. We're now at the top of the stairs. You can see here how the stairway led on up there through the small little tower into the minaret. That's blocked off. From this point, you can see the ruins of the old Seder. And then out in the distance, you can see Jerusalem. It's not very good. That's Augusta Victoria. Down there's the Russian Orthodox Church of the Ascension. So that's the Mount of Olives. Jerusalem's right below it. Now what we're looking at here is the plains Gibeon. A modern Arabic village name is Jib, but the old name was Gibeon. This was an interesting site associated with a number of different events in the Bible. First with the, in the Israelite conquest, the Gibeonites tricked Joshua into making a covenant with them and allowed them to survive. And so this, that mound right there that we're looking at is ancient Gibeon. Tell is on there, and then the village of Jeb, the Arab village, is right next to it. So that's old Gibeon. Uh, first incident then, Joshua making uh, the deal with the Gibeonites, covenant with them. The second incident was, this was where the battle of uh, Gibeon was fought, in which the sun stood still at Gibeon, uh, also described in the book of Joshua. The third event is the high place of Gibeon and Solomon, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Another thing to note here is the, the uh, Israeli dividing wall. Uh, you can see that dirt road there goes along there with a fence and then it becomes the wall that divides uh, Israel from the West Bank that the Israelis have built and then it uh, flips back around the other way. So we're kind of all right on the boundary here between the West Bank and, and uh, in Israel, over here, you can see what everybody's mad about, and that's an Israeli settlement. You can see the new construction's going on there, and they've essentially gerrymandered the wall out here to include that. Notice the, the road is on the Israeli side of the wall, not the Palestinian. Over here, however, is the door that leads in to what says here, the Kanisa, which means the synagogue, the place of meeting. Through here is the entryway. They're down there praying, and I will go down in a moment and uh,
The other interesting thing about this site is that it was the site of the high place of Gibeon where Solomon offered his sacrifices. And that's kind of interesting because it, it was a place where the, it says the tent of meeting was kept and that uh, this then was a place probably where the tabernacle rested for a while and then the uh, Solomon offered sacrifice here. Chronicles approves of this, but uh, the book of Kings disapproves, saying it was something he did wrong. These are, uh, are places where you burn candles in memory and in honor of... Uh, the prophet Solomon, or not Solomon, Samuel. And the Haredi come in here, you can see the little pieces of candle that they uh, light. And these are kind of funeral candles that you light in memory of the dead. So this is part of the practice of venerating the tomb.